In the middle of the 18th century, the UK became the cradle of the Industrial Revolution and so commenced a long and great heritage in design and innovation. Crafted products produced by artisans rapidly gave way to industrialised processes, delivering mass-produced manufactured goods which required the design of manufacturing tools, the design of factories and, of course, the design of the products themselves. To ensure these newly produced products had added value and were competitive in the international marketplace, the UK government opened the first design school in 1837, now the world-renowned Royal College of Art and the world's oldest design school, where students were trained to add value by applying art to the products. This paved the way for the development of design education and the quality of design education enjoyed by UK design students today. Many of the newly designed products were on display at the Great Exhibition of 1851, an international showcase of manufacturing, design and innovation. Manufactured products give an added value by industrial artists. The birth of the Industrial Revolution was now seeing the birth of design as a profession and the embedding of design into industry and life. By 1930, the design had its own professional body, starting as a society of industrial artists before becoming the society of industrial artists and designers and now the Chartered Society of Designers. Hello, my name is Frank Peters and I have the privilege of not only being the Chief Executive of the Chartered Society of Designers, supporting designers who in turn support the UK economy, but above all promoting design as a means of improving life for all. And now as the UK Ambassador for the Tegulio Design District, further promoting good design internationally. The almost 100 year history of the society mirrors the development of design and the design profession in the UK, with many notable famous designers being or having been members of CSD. James Dyson, developing innovative consumer products. Sir Paul Smith in the field of fashion and retail design. Alan Fletcher, FCSD, showing us how to look and observe differently. Sir Terry Farrell, also a fellow of the society, presenting buildings in a postmodern way. Sir Richard Rogers, Lord Rogers, turning buildings inside out. Sir Norman Foster, Lord Foster, designing and engineering building structures. And Sir Terence Conran, who brought design into the realms of mass consumerism with his 1960s habitat revolution. And there are all those UK fashion designers whose work has had a significant impact on all aspects of design and continues to do so. Jean Muir, Mary Quant, Sandra Rhodes, Vivian Westwood, Hussein Chalian. But it is not all about the past, the heritage and the design celebrities. Design is an industry, a commercial activity, for many a job, albeit a fun, enjoyable and rewarding activity. The UK design sector is significant. According to the latest findings by the UK Creative Industries Council, it provides some 163,000 jobs in design and fashion, with 50% of that workforce being educated to degree level. It contributes £71.7 billion of GVA, productivity, 
turnover and employment, according to the UK Design Council, whilst at the same time contributing some £34 billion to UK exports. In fact, according to the same figures and survey, 35% of all UK exports came from industries that employ higher than average concentrations of designers. It is not surprising, therefore, that with such a long and esteemed heritage and being of such strategic economic value, that the UK is seen as a major design influencer globally. UK design and designers, the products and brands they create, are recognised and sought after around the world. Names such as structural and installation designer Thomas Heatherwick, furniture and lighting designer Tom Dixon, and brands such as Liberty Pringle Burberry. UK design and design engineering have given us some of the most iconic automotive brands seen driving on the roads in all parts of the world. Jaguar, Rolls-Royce, Bentley, Aston Martin, Lotus, McLaren, and not just driving on roads. Land Rover has been delivering workhorses and lifestyle for over 70 years. And all this design activity is underpinned by some of the world's leading design education institutions here in the UK. Educating designers to work in an industry that is continually changing technologically, socially, politically and environmentally. Educational institutions that pride themselves on the high standards of design education and especially those that seek accreditation from professional bodies, such as that offered by the Chartered Society of Designers in its course accreditation programme, supporting design education, not just in the UK, but internationally, in Sri Lanka, China, Bahrain, the USA, Switzerland, Saudi Arabia, and Hong Kong. Institutions such as Cranfield University's Center for Competitive Creative Design, University of the Arts Chelsea, Nottingham Trent University, University of Plymouth and Derby, Staffordshire University, Bahrain Polytechnic, and XJTLU in Jiaotong. Design delivers innovation, and the UK design sector, working collaboratively with other disciplines and professions, and drawing on its social and cultural diversity and aspiring young designers, is a global player in tackling the problems we face today and no doubt tomorrow, in delivering consumer satisfaction, making life better and in delivering economic success. From medical instruments to luxury handbags, from innovative bikes to luxury yachts, from fashion designing to car designing, from furniture design to aeronautical design. Designers addressing the issues of the past into the solutions of the future. But design influence is not a one-way dynamic. The UK engages with designers and design users globally through international exhibitions, conferences, design education and initiatives organised and supported by institutions and design bodies such as the British Council, the Victoria and Albert Museum, the Design Museum, DNAD, the Royal Society for the Arts and the UK Design Council. Initiatives that are supported at the highest level, such as the London Design Pavilion organised by the Chartered Society of Designers for Shenzhen Design Week, and supported by the Mayor of London with over 50 exhibitors from design and architecture. The UK was born out of, and has always been, and still is, a melting pot of different cultures. And this diversity has produced a design sector 
that draws on cultural influences from around the world, delivering a rich and vibrant design sector that it seeks to share with others. Whether in the UK, at major exhibitions such as 100% Design, New Designers, where new design talent is on display, or at the internationally acclaimed London Design Week and the many local design weeks around the UK, or indeed at international events. And Italian design is acknowledged the world over, and our society has awarded its Minerva Medal for a lifetime achievement in design to no less than six Italian designers out of the 43 awarded in the past 60 years. Awards to Alberto Alessi, Artili Castiglioni, Mario Bellini, Vico Magistretti, Giorgetto Giagaro, and Pierre Luigi Nevi. That's why I'm delighted and honoured to have been invited to be the UK Ambassador for the Tegulio Design District and this interesting, exciting and important initiative, bringing designers together to display and celebrate their work and introducing them to clients and new markets for mutual benefit.